nice cheap headphones you got me, Grandma. Oh. Okay, ah! be careful with the microphone, gentlemen. Be careful with the microphone. No. Alrighty then. Careful now. Careful, ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the da -da -da -da, 13th episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Poodcast. Poop. Who wants some poop? Giving out free poop for the Dynamite Gizmo Poopcast. We got two pink cards today. Stick it in the pink. Shove it in my sink. Lick it in my rink. They're both filled up. Look at that. Would you look at that, baby? Get your lights up, baby. We got lights up, baby. Speaking of lighters, Bic lighters is the first topic of discussion. Have you ever been to a concert and have you put your uh, lighter up in the air and wave it like you just don't care? And when you rock this party, we're going to rock the Bob Delaire. You know what I'm saying? Nowadays, people don't use their Bic lighters. They use their cell phones. They flick the, the flashlight mode on. What a bah, 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 like this. I'll show you. If you don't know what I'm talking about. For those grannies out there, because I know I get a lot of grannies listening in. If you've got an Android grandmas, here's what you're going to do, grandmothers. You're going to sw swipe down. You see that? And it's going to say torch right in the middle. Boom! Oh, shining right in my face. Grandma. There you go, Grandma. So when Grandma goes to her Bob Dylan concert, Neil Young. Speaking of Neil Young, there was a peti petition a few years ago going around on Facebook that said, change Neil Young's name to Neil Old because of how old that motherfucker looks. And he does look old. He looks really old. Hmm. I feel like this camera is crooked. Bet you any money it's crooked. Uh, 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 uh. Oh yeah, she's crooked. Is that better? Is that better? Who gives a fuck? Who cares? Not me. I kind of do. The, the whole place I'm living in is crooked. So it's not a big deal. What were we talking about? Um, Bill Cosby or something. We're talking about Bic lighters. And then... Home, home on. And then we swish, 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 swish over to the flashlight on the cellular device. Which led to... Who cares? Let's just move on to the fire in hell. I remember as a kid, a young, let me tell you a story about a field trip I went on. <laughs> that was a weird pause. I paused right before I said on. Let me tell you a story about a field trip I went on. That's my new thing. I'm going to pause. Um, un unconventionally throughout sentences in conversations with anyone just to confuse people so this school trip I went on <laughs> yeah, we, we had to walk all around Sydney Sydney, Nova Scotia for those who don't know that's where I'm from the good old Cape Breton Ooland Island yeah, there she goes there, buddy. <laughs> Cape Breton Island. Um, we walked around town. I don't know if it was church to church. I think it was church to church once. Not to do prayers or anything. Just They were like old, abandoned churches. I don't even know if they were churches. I, can't, I cannot remember what exactly they were. Because I didn't pay attention back then. I was just curious about looking at the pictures and stuff. I'm pretty sure they were churches. We went to this one church that had a supposed visit from Satan. 
and they had a picture of Satan in the church, and it it was really freaked the fuck out of me. But uh, uh, to me, it felt real, but obviously it was fake. I don't believe in Satan, but at the time, it felt it felt real because I was young. <laughs> it's pretty weird to think about it now that a church would actually advertise that. We saw Satan. He was here. <laughs> we got a picture of him. <laughs> and they put it up in the fucking church. If I'm remembering correctly, I could be remembering completely wrong. We were probably in an old fisherman's house and it was a picture of a creepy fish. <laughs> and I and I made up this crazy story in my mind that it was Satan. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what actually happened. Because I would do something like that. And it would get trapped in my brain. <laughs> it makes me sound like I'm a psycho. I'm a psycho. Um, Napoleon. On the horse. That guy was a psycho. Wasn't he? He was a murderer. And he wasn't actually short. I was actually in Europe. Uh, I went to Paris and London. Wales. Ireland. Uh, yeah, some of the stuff I saw. I went on the London Eye. That was cool. It's like, for those who don't know, it's a it's a giant Ferris wheel. Like, giant. You could fit 20 people. More than 20 people. Probably close to 50 50 people in a capsule and it's a big enclosed capsule and it goes around and it's ferris wheel style but it's way bigger and uh people take shits in them people propose someone proposed once and the girl declined and they had to you know wait <laughs> it was a sl and it's super fucking slow so they had to wait Till it got all the way around. So it was awkward. That was awkward. I wasn't there. But I heard stories. I also saw Shakespeare. You know Shake the Sphere? Shake and Bake? <laughs> Good old Shake and Bake. What's up, Shaker? Yeah, we, we, <clears throat> we went to Shakespeare's uh, grave. He was buried in a church. And it was like cemented in. They poured cement over him. I went over and I shook his hand. Because his arm's still sticking out of his... No, I'm just kidding. I gotta be careful with this mic, man. It's so fidgety. It you remember what happened last time? It's a fidget machine. Shakespeare Place was cool. The whole town was... I can't remember the name of the town. But the whole town that he lived in and grew up in, when I got to see his house and, and Anne Hathaway's house, I got to go in both of them. His dad was a glove maker. We got to see gloves. I don't know if they were the original gloves. Uh, yeah. I got to step on his grave. No. No, that didn't happen. There's a barrier around it. There's also a barrier. We went to when we went to Paris. We went to the Lou the Louvre, La Louvre. You know that French place? The f it's like a pyramid. You go underground, underneath it. And the Mona Lisa is surrounded by people, full of tourists taking pictures. But it's like a thick bulletproof glass around it. Um, you can't get anywhere near the thing. And there's bodyguards with machine guns, and they'll shoot your face. They will literally shoot it. Uh, oh, and there was also, uh, I saw s there was like Lamborghinis and Ferraris on the street. You pay 60 euros or pounds, whatever it was, and you can drive, drive it around uh, Europe. Drive it around wherever we were, Paris or wherever the fuck. I think it was in London. Drive around, or maybe it was Paris, or maybe it was, I, I don't know, 
It was it was one of somewhere in Europe. That was pretty cool. We didn't do it though. All you had to do was show a valid driver's license and pay the money, but we didn't just we just didn't do it. Nobody did it. And I think it was because we were just walking past it and you know, we weren't gonna all stop and watch Whoa, one because it was a school trip. School Europe trip. So we weren't just gonna watch one kid drive around in a Lambo wait for uh If it was me driving it I would make everyone stop. I'd be like, yo bitches, hold up. Let me hop in his Lambo for one sec. I'm out. Fuck y'all. <laughs> Bounce. Just get right out. On the school trip. I'm heading back to the smooth strip club. I'm gonna get my dang lang sucked on. Yeah, yeah. And there was a point when uh, we all slept in late. Well, yeah, we all slept in late. Because you were separated into groups. Boys versus girls. If you were girls, you were in a girl room. Four people to a room max. Uh, two minimum. And I was in a room with three other guys. Uh, and we slept in late. Uh, really late, like extremely late. And one of the chauffeurs, or is that no? That's not that. <laughs> is that what they're called? No, 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 no. That's not what they're called. What is it called when someone comes on a trip, a parent comes on a trip? It's not a chauffeur. Why can't I remember that word? But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. One of those guys came up and he was so mad. And he was pounding on the door. Pounding, pounding. And screaming our names. <laughs> and nobody woke up. Well, until one of, us, one of us did eventually wake up. It wasn't me. And he was just screaming his head off. He burst the door open, turned the lights on. Because we were so late. We were running so late. And everyone was pissed at us for a little while. But then everyone got over it. <laughs> but I felt shitty. For not getting up at the right time. That's not something I, I ever do. I'm just, I don't know why I didn't have my alarm set. It's just one of those things that happens. Or maybe, I'm pretty sure it was because one of the guys was like, I got the alarm set. Y'all don't have to worry about it. And we were, <laughs> we made sure we double checked. And it just didn't happen. <laughs> no one had the alarm. No one woke up. Oh, my mouth is dry as a pencil. So we were talking about Lambos, which made me think of Limbo. Have you ever been in Limbo? Limbo? Black? Nothing? I've played the game Limbo. I was joking about have you ever been in Limbo. But like, uh, what's the difference between before you were born and then... When you, after death, before you were born, after death, that's limbo, right? You're a sperm, you're a spermling, you swim all the way to the egg. We all made it to the egg, that's one thing you can, you can be happy about. You, you may not win too many races in life, but you did win the race to life. Because you are alive. You were the one who per, per plumped open that egg. You pierced it, and you swiggled your way in. You might have came out with uh, some sort of disability, maybe a leg on your head, maybe a little downsies. Who knows? But you still came out of. You still pierced the egg. You got there first. All your other brothers and sisters, they all died, and they're left on your mother's uterus wall. To crust up, and then she just pisses them out into the toilet the next day. And they all get flushed away into the sewer. While you're chilling out in the egg, turning into a human. 
That's pretty cool of you. That you were able to go from a tadpole all the way to a fat slob who eats Doritos on his couch. That's fascinating. Isn't that fascinating? That's so fascinating. So when you were so when you die, so when that sperm thing dies and he's on that uterus raw wall crusting up and he gets pissed out or on the vagina wall, wherever whatever wall it is, some kind of wall. Some wall in the vagina. I mean, what happens to the sperm? Does it actually die and get stuck to the wall, or does it, <laughs> or does it uh, drown eventually, or does it just swim around in there forever? No, it definitely dies. There's no way it can survive. And how fast does it happen? How long does it take for the sperm to get to the egg? I know there's people watching who know this answer, but I just don't know the answer right now. And I would look it up if I had someone else here to, to talk while I was looking up the answer. But I don't have anyone else here. Right? That's right. That's right, poopy pants. So what's the difference between before you were born and death? I still didn't answer the question. How am I supposed to answer this question? You expect me to answer this question? I don't know enough about this shit. What's the difference between before you were born and death? Like, well, let's think about it. Before you were born, it's nothing. And then you die. What is it? Is it still nothing? What about before you were born? Was that actually nothing? What if there was something and you just don't remember it? I'm not saying there's a heaven or a hell. And I'm not trying to say that there is something indefinitely. But I'm just proposing a thought. Because there's no, there's not really a way to answer it. Maybe there is a way to answer it if you're smart enough. But I'm not smart enough. I could think about it for hours and maybe come up with something. And if I do, I'll write it down. But I'm not, it's not like I'm going to come up with the answer. I just wanted to bring up the topic. Just something to think about. New, new ideas in store for this show coming up. Um, I don't want to say what they are. I don't want to say when it's going to happen. Because I don't know when it's going to happen. Because I got to wait for things to happen. I'm going to turn up the gain a little bit. Cock in the shitter, fuck in the tit, vagina, vagina, vagina. Hello, hello. Is there a, is there a prostitute in the area? Is that a prostitute I smell? Prostitutes do not smell good. I can hear everything now. I can hear rubbing the leather. Of my chair? Can you hear that? Probably. Can I hear the clicking of my buttons? Oh, yes. This thing would pick up Bigfoot, no problem. It's called the Yeti. Isn't it? This is the Yeti microphone. That's what made me think of Blue Bigfoot, Bigfoot, Blue <laughs> Bigfoot. I almost said Bluefoot. Who's Bluefoot? Uh, Sully from Monsters Stink. Monsters Stink. Um, what do you get when you put an Asian in an African diner? Let's see. What do you get when you put it? 
Did you hear that? African. <laughs> oh God, Afro Asians. Look at all the answers we get. Can can Asian and African elephants produce offspring? I just wanted to bring up the topic of Asians because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them sparking up in Canada. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's a great thing. I love me some Asians. <laughs> because I like sushi. Duh. Well, I do like sushi. There goes my fridge. I do like sushi, but I'm not, I don't want to say I want Asians to come here just for sushi because there's a lot of benefits of having Asians in Canada and I don't really know specifically, but I just have a feeling that it would be a positive, but they seem to be overflowing everywhere you look, someone's Asian. And I'm not trying to be racist. People love to twist things. I know how much people love to twist things, especially when it comes to racial topics. So if it happens, it happens. But that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just pointing out. Like I went to a rave. When did I go? Uh, I don't even remember. Oh yeah, it was New Year's this year. Yeah, New Year's of this year. Went to a rave. Uh, in Calgary. And there was like... I was like, the me and my friend were the only white people there. Everyone else was Asian. Literally. We were the minority. But it wasn't a big deal. They were all cool. I mean, there was a few other white people. But... The mo the by far it was Asians. Just Asians. And British Columbia is even worse for it. Just a lot of of Asians. But I'm cool with it. Other people aren't. Other people move out of British Columbia because there's so many Asians. That's their reasoning. And I don't know if that's a good enough reason or not. Maybe, well, I don't know. I don't think they're bad people. What could they do to harm? I know they like to breed. There's a lot of people breeding. I wish I had a water. I didn't bring a water. Hey, Gregory. Can you get me a water? Hey, Gregory. Can you get me a water? I don't have a Gregory. Someday, though. Oh, look, we're on our second card. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Who here knows who Terrence McKenna is? Terrence McKenna, uh, he was a dude who um, was really into uh, mushrooms and uh, ayahuasca, all that, all those things psychedelic drugs and he proposed the idea that humans uh, what did he call it the stoned ape theory that humans were uh, evolved we evolved so quickly from apes because of the fact that we discovered mushrooms under cow patties we would lift up these cow patties find mushrooms and eat them and have these crazy ass trips and blah 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 you know the story <laughs> but uh I was just thinking about like what the hell would propo what, 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 what kind of life would you have to live where you would say to yourself I'm gonna try some heroin today or some meth or something crazy like that. And when you do try it, what the hell what the hell does it feel like? I don't want you to think like I'm going to try it cuz that's not going to happen. 
but I just want to know what that feeling is. If they can reproduce that some safe way. Because I bet it feels great. I bet it feels amazing to be strung out on meth. <laughs> You'd probably go out and... Well, maybe it just makes you crazy. See how uh, Tuco acts on Breaking Bad? He just starts killing people. A lot of people look savagey on, on, when it's that on meth, savagey. There's a place in Alberta in a city called Lloyd Minster. It's a border city right on the border of Alberta and Saskatchewan, the only one in Canada. And there was a, a van. Actually, no, it was like a mini... Uh, camper van like uh, the one on Breaking Bad except smaller and it, and it said meth for sale spray painted on the side of it and they were literally selling meth out of the, the friggin thing and they got caught because they were advertising it that way meth for sale and they were actually selling meth um the other so the other day I opened up my bathroom window and there was a spider creating a web on the old satellite dish that was still attached to my building. And the satellite dish is right next to the bathroom window. And I was watching him build this web forever and I finally saw him finish it. And then a bug came on and he grabbed it and brought it up, but he ate it. He didn't normally they suck the blood, at least that's what I thought. When I used to watch them as a kid, that's what they do. They suck the blood. But it looked like he just ate it. Or maybe I was seeing things. Like they wrap it up in the web really fast. Sometimes they'll leave it for later. But it looked like he ate it. But he probably didn't. So anyway. I threw it, there was a leaf on my windowsill. So I threw it in the web and it stuck. And he went and checked it out, and he was like, oh, it's just a leaf. And he left it there and went back to the middle of the web and sat there. And I threw a twig, and he didn't even bother with it. So then I squirted some uh, shaving cream on the web, and it stuck. And I was like, that's cool. And then it started to foam outwards, and the spider kind of freaked out, and he moved to one side of the web. And I was like, all right, let me do a little more. And it came out like crazy, and it knocked the spider off the web, and he fell all the way down. And I'm like, shit, I just ruined everything. <laughs> and then I went out today to look at the web, and it's just ruined. And it's just like, it's just a cobweb floating, floating in the breeze. And it's raining like a motherfucker. So he hasn't come back since then. So I fucked it up. I could have left him there. And come back every once in a while and seeing how many bugs he would would have caught. Which is what I want it to do. Because it's perfect sight. I could open up the window and it's right there. Perfect sight. Just see. Just something to look at while I'm taking a shit even. Because it's right next to the toilet too. But no, I fucked it up. Now he's never going to come back. We might. Um... Schooling. I was thinking about the topic of schooling and how, you know, you got, you got your, uh, everyone's classified as something. You got your, like, jocks and emos, the nerds, the geeks, and now there's all kinds of crazy ones like hipsters. But it is kind of, it's starting, it is, it is starting to kind of all form into one group now. But I don't think it's quite there yet. But still, this idea that we're all teaching every kid the exact same way. I feel like every kid needs to be taught. They need to have an analysis done on every kid individually and find out how the how each kid uh, needs to be taught. Some kids might need uh, more visual. Maybe other kids need... Sometimes people learn better in their sleep. If you, if they're sleeping and you put headphones on of 
of a lecture. They'll remember all that. There's different methods for learning. But we still live in this old-fashioned way of putting everyone in rows so we can get used to working in factories. That's what it was. It was training for factory work. All this prim and proper stuff. Hopefully we get past that by 2020. It'd be nice to see. Because I was thinking about gym class. Like you expect every kid in gym class to reach the same level. I don't think it's going to happen. Some kids are born fat genetically. And then their parents are both fat. So they don't have any reason or initiative to lose the weight. Because their parents are fat and then they couldn't just blow it off as, well, it's no big deal. You're fat, you're fat. But that's very unhealthy. And you can jump all day and sleep all night. But I'm a rock this time or like the party's right. <clears throat> so I could see a thing where if they analyzed you they'd be like okay uh, you're you're qualified for gym class you're not qualified for gym class so maybe they could be put into an, uh, an easier gym program with other kids at their level. Yeah, that's what it would be. Other kids at... Well, I don't know. Other people would argue that you need... You need to have the mixture. You need to have the bag of mixed nuts. You need to shake it up. Because you'll get used to just interacting people at the same level as you. And you'll never learn how to uh, really accomplish anything. Because in order to... Because if you're just competing with people at your level, you're really not competing. Because it's not, it's not hard. There's nothing to it. You're all doing the same thing. But if you go against some um, six-pack steroid junkie... In gym class, that's a challenge. And if you work at it, you could eventually beat him. But you need that motivation to beat him. So if we ever did get to a utopia where we were all equal, that's what they thought communism would be. Everyone was equal. Which everyone is equal because they all get paid the same and treated the same. But that doesn't uh, solve the issue. Anyway, when you're in gym class, and you see, now they have, like when I was in gym class, I remember I talked about that uh, Mr. Hotter story in his boner, <laughs> in that, that time in elementary school, boys and girls were in the same class, they all interact together, by the time I got to junior high, we actually have a uh, friggin' wall that comes down, separates the boys from the girls, and even in high school, but now what's gonna happen, with all this gender neutral shit, and, and you don't know if you're a girl, and you don't know if you're a boy, and it's all this confusing baloney, well, I'm not saying it's baloney, There's, it's complex, are they still gonna use the are they still going to use those uh, those drop-down walls? They drop down with a switch. It's not like a, a brick wall. It's, a, it's like a tarp. A massive tarp. You can't see through it. It's like leather. And it drops down with a switch. Flick the switch and it comes all the way down. Separates the boys from the girls. So I don't know. That's interesting. Because I'm pretty sure that's all over Canada. 
It was like that in Nova Scotia. When I moved to Alberta, it was like that. Um, but have you ever noticed in gym class, when you get a look at the girls, you see those hot women? Or if, you're, or if uh, let's say you're in your locker room, the boys' locker room, it's just all guys, and a girl walks in. It's like she has a su- <laughs> it's like she has a superpower and I'm, and I know Joe Rogan has said this before and I take a lot of things from Joe Rogan and I say that all the time but I've been watching him a lot so that's where I'm getting this stuff from but it it just got me thinking like it literally is like a superpower they walk in and a- every guy just has to look at her every guy gets a boner and it's she doesn't even have to do anything if she's hot enough, if she's just so sexy and perfect in every way, she could just talk nonsense. She could say, she could talk the word of Satan and say that she's going to go kill some goats and and shove them up her ass. <laughs> That'd probably turn some guys on. But even if she did that, you wouldn't even hear it. It would just go in one ear out the other. Because he'd be staring at her tits and her ass. The fridge is still fucking going. I shut the air conditioning off for this. And then the fridge t- the fridge makes some noise. Fridge, it's a party over here. It's an epidemic, bro. It's an epidemic. For those who give hoes and blow their nose, I've got something for you, though, little bro. You want to know what's behind this epidemic wall? I'll never tell. But if you ever found out, you would call the NCIS. Because shit's crazy. I'm just kidding. That was that was that was horrible and creepy. Just clarifying now, I was that was just a joke. There's nothing behind the curtain. It's just my, it's literally my uh, living room coffee table. It's boring. There's there's nothing behind there. And I am so thirsty. Good thing there's only two topics left. Oh look at that. Speaking of thirsty, I didn't even mean to do this. I thought I was drinking a coke and it was water. You ever do that? You, uh, so, picture it in your mind. You have a a cup, you can't see through it. And you're like, oh, this is Coca-Cola. I'm going to drink it, and it's going to taste like Coca-Cola. That fizz is going to happen, and it's going to be cold. And it was cold. I could feel the cold and the condensation. And I could almost smell it. I was ready. I was ready for Coca-Cola. And as it went in... I almost tasted it right away. But then as I, as I started swallowing and getting some more in, I was like, what's wrong with this? <sighs> and I immediately freaked out because I thought there was something wrong with the Coca-Cola. It tasted horrible. And then I realized, oh yeah, I, I thought about getting Coca-Cola. I really thought about it, but then I changed my mind and put water in the cup. So that whole, because I thought about Coca-Cola longer than I thought about the water, I assumed, and then, you know, the water decision happened so fast, and then I sat down with the cup, and then and then drank it a few minutes later. I was expecting Coca-Cola, but it was water, and it happens with, you could do it with, it's worse, way worse when you're expecting Coca-Cola. And you get milk. That's happened to me before. You know what else is bad? When you pour your cereal in the bowl, you go in the fridge to get the milk, and there's no milk. And you say, fuck me, I gotta pour the cereal back in. Reminds me of an old video. Before YouTube was around, stupid videos. Remember, remember stupid videos? That's where the... That's where the viral shit happened before YouTube was around. There was a video called Milk and Cereal. 
Two guys in their kitchen with a box of milk. I mean, <laughs> a box of cereal and a jug of milk. And they had this song called Milk and Cereal. I'm going to play it. Play Milk and Cereal. Milk and cereal, cereal and milk. So old. Released in 1999. This was, this could be argued as the first viral hit. Milk and cereal, milk and cereal, milk and cereal, cereal and milk, milk and cereal, 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 I want some cereal. I keep it for myself. I keep it for myself. Where we like to be. I want the rock to be. Cause I love cereal. Can't you see? I come from the Eskimo peas with the gold beans. Can you get the spoon for me? Cause I love cereal. Yeah, we love the cereal. And we like the various. And we do the serious. Cause we like the various. And we milk the serious. Cause I'm smoking various. And we milk the serious. Milk and cereal. Cereal milk. Milk and cereal. Cereal milk. Milk and cereal. Yeah. A is for apple, C is for jack. I got the crack. Nick is on my back and I don't real pack. Put the bowl on my head, scoop it up with the bread. And I don't like bitches, we understand. Milk and cereal. 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 Cereal, cereal. Cereal and milk. 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 Milk and cereal. Milk and cereal. Milk and cereal. Milk and cereal. A boob shackle pop, snap apple pop, leak sapu shop. I like the way you pop, and the way you rock, and the way you talk. Don't like me a cock. Cuckoo for Coco Puffs, Oh man. It goes on for like um how much longer? Like another thirty seconds. Man, that is a classic. <laughs> and in the in the description it says, Remember this classic? Wow. And it was uploaded in two thousand eight. But that doesn't mean anything. It was originally uploaded a long time ago. I saw it on f on uh, stupid videos. I'm gonna add this to my favorites. <sighs> it just brings back memories, man. I gotta be careful with this cord or I'm gonna fuck shit up. Milk and cereal, cereal and milk. Oh man. Don't vote. 